thanks to everybody that made the trip to come support our kids. Um, I'm obviously very proud of our, our men. Battle back. Uh, not just in the game, but through the week of preparation. You know, like, uh, it was a rough week for everybody. And uh, I think it says a lot about their character, their unity, their toughness, their commitment to Virginia Tech. I'm awfully proud of them. Questions? Uh, you guys have talked um, last week about how you guys didn't respond to adversity against Duke. You got the turnovers in the second half. Tonight, all the adversity in the second half, what was the difference? What did you see? And how were they able to respond? What did you kind of get the sense on the side now? I mean, I guess the, the easy answer is they did respond as a group, both sides of the ball. Guys on the sidelines, coaches. To me, they, they took the coaching or the criticism during the week that we laid out for them. They listened to it, they didn't get offended, and they set out about changing it. And when the opportunity presented itself, they responded. Offensively, it seemed like Brad called a really sharp game in terms of getting Hooker some things that were easy because of the play calls. What did you think of the offensive game? Oh, I think those guys do a really good job every week. That's what I think. People I always want to jump on the play calling when things don't go well, and then things do go well, it must be the play calling. These guys are working their asses off for those kids, away from their families, game planning, trying to put them in good position. The kids made plays today. The what game? Oh, okay. Well, yeah, I mean, obviously in the first half, I don't even remember where they all came from. It was such a blur there. Um, started off with Shamari, who's really been playing well in the alley for us. Um, he either <laughs> tipped it or intercepted it, I can't remember, but I thought he played really well today. But um, it was nice to, um, to create some of those big momentum plays. <laughs> Have the offense capitalize on them, get them in the end zone. Obviously, ended up being big for us as the game went along. Um, but it was nice to get back to some of those those big emotional plays. I thought we did a good job creating pressure and, and giving the quarterback looks. Can you go through sort of your decision process to decide to start Hooker? And then when they tie the game with three eleven, he makes two huge throws. You know, and the guy only attempted two passes for today. Can you speak to his just resolve there? Or his voice? Yeah, I mean, I, there's a couple things. One, you know, to start the second half, I was disappointed on third and one. We, we did not execute. We turned the, turned the guy loose. And then the second uh, series, we had a guy, uh, we had Damon on the go ball and, and hit, um, Hendon overthrew him. And, uh, you know, and, and they started to grab momentum and all that sort of stuff. And, um, it was nice to see Hennon respond with a nice touch throw to Damon. You know, I kept telling Damon he was going to make a play to help us win, to, to win the game or help us win the game. Don't get frustrated. You know, like, you're, you're our best matchup right now. Like, the ball's going to come to you. Um, I thought that whole drive um, obviously was big um, for the entire offense to go out and execute and, you know, for Hendon to make, make some of those plays. As far as the decision, you know, those things are never easy. Um, Ryan's worked incredibly hard. Um, we'll still need Ryan as the season goes along. Um, I'm proud of how he's handled that. Um, I'm proud of how Hendon handled, um, you know, the promotion, if you will, and um, how he went out there and competed and took care of the football. Um, and then have some the, the poise to go make some plays down the stretch, I thought was obviously, obviously important. You know, the challenge for him will be um, to learn from this game, put this game ultimately behind us, and, and move forward um, to the next one. Andy. Uh, and a little over a minute left, Keen gets down to like the four yard line, uh, complete punches in on the next play. Did, when you're making your decision process there, do you consider trying to like kneel it? And kick yes. The field goal or yes. Like, well, yeah. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of ways to screw that up. Quite honestly, there's a lot of ways you can play it. You know, my first thought was, um, to center the ball and get ready for the field goal. But 
Um, you know, the other decision you can make is to call a run and tell them not to score. You know, in order to, you know, to get the ball down there as close as you can. <laughs> I feel good about any of that. Um, messing with all that stuff, I just felt like taking one shot to hand the ball off in the middle and see what happened, and then we could play it from there. Was kind of my thought. We had timeouts where you get nervous is if you don't have timeouts because you got to run field goal unit on all that sort of stuff. So we had timeouts. So if I'm not mistaken, we had two. So um, you got a little, a little bit of leeway there. My thought was we'll hand it off once and then and then see what happens, and we popped it in. Mike, two questions about the offensive line. You got rotating guys. Was that to keep Yes, I mean we just, I mean we're playing two true freshmen. You know, Silas is, you know, has had some cramping issues. We're trying to rotate him to keep him fresh. Um, so yeah, I mean it was a, we did the same thing on the defensive line. I mean it was a thick, thick night, especially for us. I mean we don't get a lot of that in Blacksburg. You know, it's been a little bit warm, but um, so we were pretty con conscientious about trying to keep those guys fresh. And then No, no, no difference. Um, I thought um, we maybe carried a little bit less and executed a little bit better. But um, you know, the the primary thing is I felt like you know, even though the results weren't very good, I felt like watching the Duke game. We 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 made some small strides in the run game. Um, I mean, obviously, this was a pretty stout test. On the, those two linebackers played a lot of football. Now they were really good players, and um, so you know, we need to continue to improve. That'll help our quarterback play better too. Did you have a sense when Hendon first start how he did in terms of controlling the huddle, leading, all those other things that go into the quarterback position? Yeah, I thought he was. Um, I thought he, I thought he did really well. Um, you know, he was. You know, communicating, he was talking to, you know, we had a little deal there where it got loud and our, our, our young guys were a little, um, particularly on third down, we jumped off sides I think once, but we kind of, Hendon kind of did a good job settling them down and we got, got kind of back moving. He had the incompletion with five seconds left. Everybody just schemes over and they put a second back. Uh, your thoughts on that and, and how, you know, the defense responded after the last yeah, proud of it. You know, we, we, we run that stuff in practice, you know, and, um, you know, one play from the 10-yard line to win the game, that sort of stuff. And it was good to see that situ us situational football pay off. Um, you're always worried about the emotional state when you have those ups and downs. You know, you, you make the play, you think the game's over. To put the, the, the second back on the clock, I have no idea about how – whether that should be should be on or shouldn't be on, I don't know. I didn't even see. I was trying to talk to the guys. If we had to go back out, that we had to be be ready to play, and, and they certainly responded. Last one. With the tight ends, uh, Keenan has three touchdowns. Mitchell, obviously, another big catch. Like, what receiver like more catch? Was that kind of you figured the focus would be because of Hendon, you know, starting his first game with mismatch? No, not, no, I wouldn't say that was the focus any more than any other time. I think it centers around it's easier to throw the ball to those guys if you can run it a little bit. And that's why some of those play actions um, worked worked pretty well because um, because we were decently successful running the ball. It looked like we were all on the back side of them. You know what I mean? Like, the, first of all, they looked like giants. When the ball was in the air, it looked like they had three guys that were huge. Um, but the best I could tell is that it looked like we were all behind them. You know, trying to knock the ball down, which is what we teach, but we, it didn't look like we had anybody in front. That's what I thought. I don't know if that's actually what happened or not, but that's, that's kind of my thought.